day two of the NFL Draft in the beautiful Music City. Good afternoon, I'm Tara Thomas. This year's draft is already historic for many prospects, including some from right here in Mississippi. Hundreds of people at two California universities are quarantined as health officials try to avoid a possible measles outbreak. UCLA and California State University issued the orders after two confirmed cases. Nichelle Medina has the latest. Severe weather is a fact of life come springtime, especially here in the South. Good evening, I'm Tara Thomas. Last Thursday, we saw at least 40 tornadoes touch down in one day. Katie Rowe joins us in the studio with what causes these dangerous storms and what's changed since the last historic outbreak. Many have expressed concern about education in Mississippi, and some say one reason is that teachers are just not paid enough here in the state. Standing just in front of the ruptured gas line here, it's literally just a few yards behind me. We're not allowed to get much closer than this. I don't think I want to either. It's, it's pretty scary. You can hear the natural gas escaping the line. It's quite loud. Uh, there's also a very strong odor of the natural gas. It is scary. The Society of St. Andrews and Deer Group came together in Brandon, sponsoring the Potato Drop. It's an event held every year in a different location. With millions of Americans watching the Super Bowl, advertisers will pay millions of dollars for just a few seconds of airtime during the game, which usually makes these uh, commercials pretty darn special. Hoping you all enjoyed the commercials tonight and, of course, the game. Reporting from Ridgeland, I'm Tara Thomas, WJTV12. That's right. The gas rupture happened just before 5 p.m. today alongside Highway 49. And crews are still out there working to fix the line and stop the highly explosive gas that's billowing through the air. Empathy for one another. It's different from sympathy in that one can experience the feelings, thoughts, or attitude of another. And it's exactly what's earned one Jackson teacher statewide recognition, her ability to sow this invaluable trait into the hearts of her students. 2018 has flown by for many of us, but over the course of these short 12 months, some news stories have made long-lasting impressions. Let's take a look at five of our top stories that you saw here on WJTV 12. If you're coming to the city of Richland and you think you can outrun the law, you better think again because nobody's faster than Rico. We are told by a veterinarian that the Khaleesi virus is treatable and furthermore it is preventable with vaccination which begs further question about the staff here at the facility and why did they not vaccinate the cats we are here in madison at the police department where officers have just returned from about a half hour long high speed chase on the 55 north which ended with the suspect crashing into a woman's car it didn't end until holmes county i understand it was a really exciting morning for everybody here at harmony court were you looking forward to this day Yes, we all were because we get kind of lonely out here. So we appreciate being the one that will come and visit us. Thank y'all so much. We are told that at least 3,000 people in Warren County are still without power as of Tuesday following the EF2 tornadoes. That's right, there were two of them, EF2s that came through Warren County. We are standing here at the hardest hit area on Tucker Road where a woman was injured in a home here when a tree came crashing through her house. Day two of the NFL Draft in the beautiful Music City. Good afternoon, I'm Tara Thomas. This year's draft is already historic for many prospects, including some from right here in Mississippi. For the first time in school history, three MSU Bulldogs are first round picks. Last night, Jeffrey Simmons, Montez Sweat, and Jonathan Abram all learned of their NFL futures. So far, these are the most MSU players to be selected in a single draft in MSU history and are tied with most picks for the year. And the momentum is steadily building in Nashville. Joining us now is WJTV 12's Noah Newman with more. Did I hear them say a free concert with Tim McGraw? You did. I, I think that's why there's so many people down there because it's not just for football. The live concerts, I mean, that'd bring, bring people like you down. It's maybe not necessarily a big football fan, but you'd go for that. I'm not sure. a huge fan, but when it's McGraw, that changes everything. Yeah. <laughs> and coming up later in our show, we'll show you how some Nashville tourists are not so pleased with the draft. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss this. Now to the court fight over Mississippi's controversial abortion law. Reproductive rights attorney filed court papers calling the so-called 
fetal heartbeat law unconstitutional. The law bans most abortions at about six weeks of pregnancy. Opponents say it will make abortion, quote, virtually unavailable in Mississippi. Governor Bryant signed the heartbeat bill into law last month. It is one of the strictest anti-abortion laws in the country. The Ronald McDonald House now has a fresh new color. Volunteers from Sherwin-Williams painted interior family bedrooms a new bright beige color this morning. It comes as part of Sherwin-Williams National Painting Week, an annual celebration dedicated to, to the transforming power of paint okay. in our community. Representatives from the Ronald McDonald House tell WJTV 12 the volunteer work helps them to remain focused on helping those that they serve. Hundreds of people at two California universities are quarantined as health officials try to avoid a possible measles outbreak. UCLA and California State University issued the orders after two confirmed cases. Nichelle Medina has the latest. And due to possible measles exposure in Hattiesburg, the Department of Health officials are urging anyone who visited Turtle Creek Mall Food Court the Subway restaurant inside of the Circle K gas station and the Raising Canes to be weary of this disease. If you suspect you have the virus, consult with your health care provider. Now here's a look at what's coming up at six tonight. Allergy season, it's one of the most dreaded times of the year. And if the sniffles and sneezes are getting you down, you don't have to worry for long. Tonight at six, we're tracking the best ways to deal with those symptoms. And the suspect from a fatal weekend hit and run has surrendered to Jackson police. 32-year-old Guy Wright is charged with felony leaving the scene of an accident. Wright is responsible for a fatal collusion that happened early Saturday morning on I-55 East of Frontage Road near Briarwood Drive. A 21-year-old male died from that crash. It's almost time for us to take a break, but first, here's a look at over Trustmark Park. The Pearl Day Festival is taking place there this weekend. Let's take a look at weather with Ken South. It has been said, a good teacher explains, a great teacher inspires. WJTV's Tara Thomas introduces us to one great teacher who's giving students a lesson that will last a lifetime empathy for one another. It's different from sympathy in that one can experience the feelings, thoughts, or attitude of another. And it's exactly what's earned one Jackson teacher statewide recognition, her ability to sow this invaluable trait into the hearts of her students. Meet Malika Quarterman. She teaches theater at Power APAC, but her lessons go much deeper than performing arts. It's such a short, short. biggest hope is that students will walk away with the ability to exercise empathy and to learn how to create instead of just to be destructive. Her students' productions tell controversial stories from the classic Arthur Miller's The Crucible to the more recent The Laramie Project, the story of Matthew Shepard, a young gay man tortured and left for dead. The first high-profile hate crimes that dealt with a, a young gay boy and that shocked the nation really because we weren't talking about the LGBTQ plus community at that time. 20 years ago nobody wanted to hear that a person was being targeted because of their sexuality. Her objective to open such discussions among students to explore their own values and impacts on society, hence instilling empathy and value for diverseness. Theater the appropriate medium to talk about issues like this and will it be effective? And I think we can see now 20 years later with a theater troupe from Jackson, Mississippi doing his show, their show, and it impacting high school students and adults in the community alike. You can see that it was a, an appropriate medium to honor Matthew Shepard. Yeah. The Laramie Project won a state championship. Quarterman's work has earned her the honor Performing Arts Teacher of the Year in Mississippi. So it really took me back. Um, I was very surprised, but then my students were the ones that told me, well, you're worthy of this. You impact us every day in different ways and it showed through on their recommendation letters and the speeches they did afterwards and I think they might be more proud of me than I am. 
Awards aside, she said her top honor is seeing her students learn a better acceptance of others. And as she watches them grow, they're less into their selves and more involved in giving back to the community with things like activism and volunteering in soup kitchens. Quarterman says she's also learning her own lessons, including balancing career and family. And her message to other women trying to do the same is forgive yourselves often. Be kinder to yourself in your quest for perfection. Because we are now doing so much, I think it's so important for us to be kinder to ourselves um, and to each other, to forgive ourselves more frequently and more fully, to allow for mistakes. And I think that we can decide to hold ourselves to excellence, whether it's in our household, in our relationships, in our careers, um, but realize that there's a difference between excellence and perfection. In Jackson, Tara Thomas, WJTV12. The family says Mario Clark was killed by Jackson police in his mother's home on Valentine's Day. This morning, they demanded justice. Death certificate. Blunt force trauma injuries with proper fasting component. Described by what means uh, this injury occurred. Physical altercation and restraint. Family and friends of Mario Clark gathered to protest how he died. At the very spot where he is said to have lost consciousness that February night and never regained it. Clark's family says he was diagnosed with a mental illness as a child. Adding that his mental state that night is the reason his mom called the police to come help. He's a paranoid schizophrenic, um, so she was calling for them to come and take him to the hospital to get help, but they didn't give him any type of help. At the to on top of the beating, AMR also gave him shots that he was allergic to, so we just want answers. Somebody have to be held accountable for what they done. He was on the floor and he was unresponsive. Somebody supposed to got down there and did CPR immediately, not wait till the ambulance pull up. When the ambulance pull up, they was not supposed to come up in there, grab him and take him out and do it. They were supposed to do it immediately CPR right then. When he lost consciousness in the street, do you attribute He lost conscious he in the house, okay. not in the street, in the house, and in handcuffs. Is that where he was assaulted? That's where he was uh, assaulted, that's where he was unresponsive at, and that's where they toted him out the house. Family members said they had foaming out the mouth. That's from an allergic reaction of the shots that they gave him. We have the medical report. He died of a severe anoxia brain image. This was a tragic incident and for it to be here at my mom's house in front of my mom, that's something that she have to live with for the rest of her life. Given Mario's mental illness, his brother says police should have handled the situation differently. The family has many unanswered questions. A grant approved by the city council last year for body cams. If these body cams were being worn in these incidents, we wouldn't be sitting up here how to prove ourselves to y'all. I'm asking the citizens of the city of Jackson, when y'all are confronted by these officers, any officers, y'all need to have video for yourself. If they can't supply it, we need to supply it for ourselves because you know that it's our word against theirs. My brother organs was missing out of his body. We have that on video. Y'all need to explain this. He's not an organ donor. On life support at the hospital, Clark was officially pronounced dead days later. Back to you. This weekend, the Community and Animal Rescue of Mississippi released a statement informing the public of an outbreak at their cattery. WJTV 12's Tara Thomas has more from a former employee in an exclusive interview you'll only see here on WJTV. A no-kill animal shelter in Jackson killed 120 cats this afternoon, according to former employees who were fired Saturday after learning the news of the director's plan to euthanize every cat resident at the facility. The reason? The director at Community Animal Rescue and Adoption says some of the cats tested positive for a respiratory virus called Khaleesi virus. They were unable to test all of the cats. And I know that the few that were tested, some come back negative. And I understand it's a, a terrible disease, I know a terrible virus, and it, and, it, and it spreads. I just wish I knew for a fact that all 
all options had been exhausted before they all got put down. We are told by a veterinarian that the Khaleesi virus is treatable and furthermore it is preventable with vaccination, which begs further question about the staff here at the facility and why did they not vaccinate the cats? I tried to speak with staff and the director today for answers prior to the mass euthanization, but I was met with shades being drawn and a door being locked as I arrived. I can't really answer that because I don't know, because I did work in the back, in the cattery, so I don't know exactly what happened once they come in. I know I'm going to get retaliation for this, but I, I feel like that my job is to speak for for the ones that don't have a voice and uh, i'm sorry okay um there were a lot that couldn't say hey i'm fine you know i'm not sick mm -hmm. so uh, i basically i'm not trying to ruin um their business because that's going to affect the animals that are still there. If anything, I want to uh, encourage the opposite. You know, please adopt. Please adopt them and donate because they need it more than you know. Reporting in Jackson, Tara Thomas, WJ TV 12. Commercials that air during the Super Bowl are a pretty big deal, and many say it's actually the reason they watch the show. My team didn't really make it this year, so, but um, I still like and I still enjoy watching the Super Bowl. The commercials are typically um, always funny, you know, something to uh, kind of catch a good laugh at. With millions of Americans watching the Super Bowl, advertisers will pay millions of dollars for just a few seconds of airtime during the game, which usually makes these uh, commercials pretty darn special. I am here for the commercials. Cause yeah. <laughs> so you, okay, so, yeah, exactly. So why is that? <laughs> because they're better than the football game. <laughs> of all those asked about their fondest memories of Super Bowl commercials, there seems to be a resounding theme. Doritos commercials are classic. Doritos. Doritos. Yeah, Doritos always is a good one. Doritos. Yeah, all the Doritos. The Super Bowl commercials can make us laugh and cry and remember them. And at five and a quarter million dollars a pop, they had better do something. Hoping you all enjoyed the commercials tonight and, of course, the game. Reporting from Ridgeland, I'm Tara Thomas, WJTV12. Tonight's top story, suspects wanted for house burglaries have been caught. We've got their confession on camera just moments after they were arrested. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Hines County deputies and police in Raymond made a major bust and stopped house burglars in their tracks. Well, one of the alleged teenage thieves confessed to the crime to WJTV 12's Tara Thomas while cuffed in the backseat of a police cruiser moments after they were caught. Raymond police and Hines County Sheriff's deputies raced to a quiet rural community in Raymond Wednesday afternoon when someone called saying their neighbor's house was being robbed. The suspects were caught evading the scene with a car full of stuff that police say did not belong to them. Police here tell me that the suspects were actually finished robbing the house on Holiday Trace here in Raymond and they were leaving the scene when police arrived. They stopped the vehicle and apprehended the three men. Inside of their Honda, police found what appears to be nearly 20 firearms or so, a whole ton of ammunition, laptop computers, video games, and nearly a pound of marijuana. A neighbor here also tells me that the uh, homeowners who were victimized were not home at the time, but they did have a German Shepherd who was home. The suspects somehow managed to get the dog out of the house while they did their dirty work. Don't let the camera get like that. Did you break in these houses? Yes, sir. You did? Yes, sir. Who did? Where'd you get all the guns? I got it from the house around the corner. Down the, hot, down the block, the homeowners weren't home? No, sir. Why would you do that? What'd you plan to do with them? Uh, we'll sell, sell them for money? No, sir. The accused men tell me that their ages are just 18 and 19 years old. 
Police say one of them does have a criminal past for similar involvement. They are under suspicion for other burglaries. Reporting in Raymond, I'm Tara Thomas, WJTV12. People in the Delta foothills are still picking up the pieces in the days following the mass storm destruction that's still hurting thousands of people. Entergy crews, linemen and engineers have been hard at work day and night over the last three days repairing what the winds ripped away. We are told that at least 3,000 people in Warren County are still without power as of Tuesday following the EF2 tornadoes. That's right, there were two of them, EF2s that came through Warren County. We are standing here at the hardest hit area on Tucker Road where a woman was injured in a home here when a tree came crashing through her house. A lot of uh, damage in this area. Obviously the cleanup is still ongoing. This street is still closed. Uh, can't even drive through most of it. Uh, the house adjacent to us uh, on either side of us, uh, both of them uh, sustained uh, major damage. Um, and then behind me what you see is uh, uh, power crews attempting to restore power to this area. Uh, over to my left, uh, covered with the blue tarp, uh, sustained damage from the tornado as well as a tree through it. Uh, the lady uh, homeowner that was here that evening uh, in the living area sustained a, a minor injury. Entergy has also brought in their mobile customer service vehicle, which will remain in the parking lot of the Vicksburg Outlet Mall until electricity is restored. Service reps there are providing their customers with information about their power and with the most basic of needs while their homes are without electricity, keeping their cell phones on for communication. Customers in the area, to, if they want to stop by and try to get current information on when, approximately when, the power will be restored, uh, we can look into it and provide them with the best information that we have available. We also have uh, battery chargers for cell phones, for those whose power is still out and they don't have a means of recharging the cell phones. And we have some bottled water that we can hand out to help them endure the heat. Coming, we actually have charge stations in the CIC and then we have uh, portable uh, battery chargers for the cell phones and we're giving them those that, that, that they can take with them. Entergy will continue to work through the night. They do hope to have everything fixed by 11 p.m. In the event that they don't, the customer service bus will reopen at the outlet mall on Wednesday. In Vicksburg, Tara Thomas, WJTV12. Law enforcement in Richland are working through the night to keep people safe from a highly explosive gas rupture along the highway. WJTV 12's Tara Thomas went to the scene and has more from the newsroom. Tara? That's right. The gas rupture happened just before 5 p.m. today alongside Highway 49. And crews are still out there working to fix the line and stop the highly explosive gas that's billowing through the air. The Richland Fire Department and police are taking the matter very seriously and evacuating nearby people from their home. You can hear it's a pretty, it's a pretty big line. Uh, natural gas is lighter than air, so for it, it just floats up. But so what we do is we just evacuate downwind from it, which it's a house by, right behind them. Uh, no one's uh, home in that house at this time. But we pretty much just stay back to try to keep it from finding an ignition source. The chief says such ignitions are rare, but any amount of open flame in the area could be deadly. The ignition source, it would light up. It'd be a, it'd be a Roman candle there until they got the uh, gas shut off. So it's it's a potential danger. So we're here just to keep anything from happening. I'm standing just in front of the ruptured gas line here. It's literally just a few yards behind me. We're not allowed to get much closer than this. I don't think I want to either. It's it's pretty scary. You can hear the natural gas escaping the line. It's quite loud. Um, there's also a very strong odor of the natural gas. It is scary. We're told construction crews accidentally hit the line earlier today, causing the rupture. Police have shut down one lane of the northbound 49 near Barnett's Body Shop. But traffic seems to be flowing smoothly. It is looking like the energy company will be working there through the night to get it fixed. Back to you.